Claude Hoppers. This is Homesteading at Cooker Gift. Today we are going to work on a stand for our butchering station for rabbits. We've got two rabbits that we need to dispatch today. We've got a friend coming over later after church to help us out with it. But first we need to install our rabbit ringer items. ago but we just didn't really have a good place that set that we were going to um, install these and now that we're ready to do butchering we've decided it's time to do it so we have a piece of board that we got from our burn pile dive check out that video and we're going to use it as our base we've already got a post that we picked out left by the previous owners of the uh, homestead and we're just going to cut it we only need a piece long enough for our actual ringer so that's gonna be a little bit lower on the post because we need to have a good pull um, we need to be able to get the motion going right because it's a cervical dislocation it makes it quick the rabbit doesn't feel anything after that because you're dislocating the the spine so the nerves are are going to continue going, but the rabbit won't be able to feel anything because the brain is now dislocated from the rest of the body, so it's not processing that information as pain. That's why we decided to go with the rabbit ringer for the cervical dislocation. The rabbit ringer can also be used for chickens. However, we haven't used it for chickens. Um, it's got this plate on the other side that you can adjust and pull that in and it makes your hole smaller and it's the animal's neck goes through and then you do the quick pull and that's what dislocates the spine and puts them out so that they're not in pain and to us we felt that was just the most humane way to um, take care of our animals so that we can process them for the meat so we've got the rabbit ringer on this side for the cervical dislocation process. We're going to cut this board short because all we need is enough board to put on our post so that we can mount this rabbit ringer. The reason we can't do the rabbit ringer straight to the post is because there are three locations for your screws or bolts to go into and our post isn't wide enough for that. So we use the board to give it a solid base and we'll attach the board to the post. This other length of board, um, we had some discussion on that, and we decided, <clears throat> I decided to um, leave it longer, my poor hubby, um, to leave it longer. That way we can put this implement in the middle, and then on either side we can attach hooks or a shelf or something to hold the implements that, or the tools that we'll be using to do the processing of the rabbits. For example, we might put a screw or a nail to be able to hook the water hose sprayer onto so that it's an easy reach to be able to spray it down if it's needed. We can also maybe at some point put a small shelf on the other side to set the knife or scissors or whatever utensils we're going to be using. We may not utilize it and thus our discussion. We may just have a separate side table but at this point, I would rather have it longer if we need the space and find that would be useful. And if we don't need it, we can always cut it down smaller. So this particular part was also purchased from the same manufacturer as the Rabbit Ringer. And I believe it's rabbitringer.com. And we'll show a picture of that so you can see that. But with this, you put the legs, the back legs or the hocks of the rabbit inside this and it holds the rabbit upright so you can do the processing. Now, there are a lot of YouTube videos and you don't have to do this as an investment. We decided to do it this way because what I remembered as a kid when, we, uh, when my family processed rabbits, um, 
I wanted to perhaps improve upon it a little bit, but I will say this was a definite investment. It does not come cheap. It's stainless steel, it's welded by hand, it's a, a small business owner, and that was another reason we were, or I was willing to invest the money, because I don't think Justin and I were married at the time. I was willing to invest that money to help support him and to have something that I felt comfortable with and that I felt would aid me in the process of relearning how to, to butcher and process rabbits. Now, you can just use a string. Joel Salatin has a couple of, well, actually it's Joel Salatin's son, Daniel Salatin, um, has a couple of great videos on how he processes rabbits, and there's hardly any overhead cost because it's basically um, a mounting structure, so it can be a board, a beam, um, even PVC pipe hanging from the ceiling somewhere. And then he takes two strings with knots and you just use those, um, they're kind of like slip knots, and you use those to hold the rabbit up. There are also YouTubers that use um, flexible wire with a PVC pipe as a, a, a holder, or you can even just put the, the rabbit directly on the board with nails. I don't like that method quite as much because um, after the cervical dislocation or really any kind of dispatch of the animal, the nerves are going to make that rabbit kick. That's just part of it. And if you are you just have it mounted on nails, it could come off. At least that's what we experienced when I was younger. Um, so that's why I invested in this. But please check out multiple YouTube videos. There's plenty of them online to see which methods you like best. That's what my husband and I have been doing to um, get ourselves prepared for our processing because we want to do it as efficiently and effectively as possible so that it has the least harm to the animals and makes the best quality meat for our family, for our nutrition. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and have Justin saw on this board where we've marked it and then we'll go from there. A few starting cuts. Look at him go. That's my man. Good job, babe. Good job, sweetie. Thank you. We're all about frugality on the homestead, so we're going to look for a few screws that perhaps we can use for this project without having to go to the store to buy some more. <laughs> Okay, we have now installed our rabbit ringer. We have it low so that we can pull up. We're hopeful that this is a good angle for us so that it's a quick kill and the rabbit will not feel any pain. That is our goal because we want this to be as humane as possible because we, we love our animals and we take care of them. And while we want to benefit from the nourishment that they will provide, because we are blessed that God has given us these animals on our homestead, we also don't want them to suffer in any way for that nourishment. So we've anchored that to our post, and then our friend here, <laughs> Jacob, our friend Jacob has helped us install this particular one up top. This is where the rabbit will hang once we have done the cervical dislocation, and this is where we will bleed out and then process the rabbit, removing all the entrails, etc. Forgive this screw, it didn't want to screw in all the way. We show you the, the good side and bad side, <laughs> failures and delights. So, that's set to go, and we're going to grab our rabbit.
forgive me if I make any mistakes. It's been a while since I butchered. The last time I butchered a rabbit was when I was a kid. And um, we're trying some different techniques from different YouTubers we've watched. So uh, we're gonna try to make it as quick and painless as possible. But um, I know there's gonna be a little bit of flub ups here and there. So we're gonna get started. Hey Cloud Hoppers, thanks for watching the video. Push the thumbs up to like the video. Also hit that subscribe button, also the bell, so that you can get notifications when our videos come out. Check us out on our social media pages too. We have Facebook and Pinterest, and soon we'll have Instagram. The links are below. Bye y'all! Bye! <laughs> Good job. Hmm.